No, it doesn't make sense. But that's part of the genius of it. It's a story driven fully by emotion, which is pretty fascinating. And it's the whole reason why this story holds up at all. It's a simple plot, probably too simple, but in 1937, no one had seen anything like this come from animation. There was very little in the form of film shorthand that we experience today. In fact, this movie originated many of the tropes we see in modern fairy tales. I have to say that I enjoyed the second half of this movie after the plot got rolling, far more than I remembered before. However, if the plot was in a new movie today, it would not be revolutionary, and really, it would not be very good. It's a plot full of filler, gags, and poorly executed emotional appeal, but surprisingly, that emotionality still legitimately works. If Walt Disney understood anything while making this first movie, it was how to make us feel. Those feels are what keep us coming back for more, even today. As it was released, there was nothing yet to compare it to, though, so Snow White begins its comparative journey as the number one storyline so far. Spoiler, Snow White has no competition this week, so it will be number one in every category. If you're watching this video to see exciting rankings, come back next week. Music. I would say the score is wonderfully produced. The feel of the music definitely outlines the emotions of the spectator, especially in the scenes surrounding the Evil Queen. Disney seemed to have a way with throwing a lot of interest and excitement at his most evil characters in the early days. However, I cannot say the same for the voice-led songs. The songs themselves are fine, but I'm not a fan of the voice work. It's confusing, to say the least. It doesn't help that Snow White is ambiguously both a 13-year-old child and a 27-year-old woman. Overall, the music is wonderfully classic, but the voice work is definitely a product of the times. Regardless, at least for one week, Snow White has absolutely, hands down, the best music. Animation. Remember how I said Walt Disney seemed to put a lot of time and energy into creating his villains? The Evil Queen seems to be the originator of this trope. She is so beautiful and yet so scary looking in the same frame. Now, let's compare her with Snow White and the Prince. Enough said. However, that doesn't mean Snow White is not used well or placed in fascinating locations. Each dwarf is created very well. All the dwarfs have a similar style, a beard, except for Dopey, a big nose, and a bald head. But somehow you can tell each one apart at first glance. And as they move, their facial expressions cement their differentiation even more. In this case, it's the facial expressions that really make each of these characters stand out. Scenes portraying movement to and from one point of view are very well done also. I love how the backgrounds move at a different speed from that of the foreground. We'll hear more about this in technology. Once again, Snow White comes in first place for animation this week. Characters. My biggest beef with this movie is that there is almost no character development. Snow White wants a man. The prince just wants... to sing? Rather just sing. The dwarves are solely defined by their names. None of the protagonist characters have any real subtleties or even story arcs, except maybe Grumpy, who seems to be a little bit complex. Instead of delving into the motivations and desires of these positive characters, the story is too enamored with waking up Snow White, or washing faces, or dancing, or cleaning a house that our protagonist doesn't even live in. The Queen, on the other hand? Oh, she's motivated. Matter of fact, she's the only character that cares at all to get the plot going. All other characters are happy doing inane things. We don't have conversations or experience any tension until the Queen wills it. And that's my big problem with this content. There's a subtext here that seems to make it obvious that women who are proactive are evil. How dare a woman have a motivation other than to clean whatever living space she inhabits? 
I mean, Snow White even goes so far as to apologize for crying after the intense, scarring drama she has just endured. She falls on the ground and, in an immediate change of heart, she says, I'm so ashamed of the fuss I made. The implications of this are far deeper than I could or want to go in a 15 minute video. Let's just say things are changing. We live in a much different world today. As I said before, this is a movie filled with filler. There are many cute scenes, and these scenes were great at the time for the purpose of showing off this new animation ability. But this movie does not really create characters. It really favors gags over character development. But that doesn't mean it's not deserving of the number one spot this week. Technology. The multiplane techniques are amazing all around. Walt Disney created and pioneered the multiplane camera. Without this technique, all surfaces would be flat and all items on the page would move at one speed. Instead, he was able to make the effect that some pieces of animation were moving at different speeds to create a three-dimensional world effect, even on a flat surface. This effect was also used to create some incredibly creative moments. For instance, there is a moment when our point of view becomes that of the crows. This is masterfully done and very off-putting for the audience, as we identify with the fear the crow must have had in living with this unstable master. All these scenes were created by the multiplane camera and were beautifully done. And once again, it's number one in technology. I know, I know, you totally didn't see that one coming. This is the one different category. Its purpose is that of the equalizer, as it compares the movie to the technology available. There was literally no full-length animated features before Snow White. There were no animation samples, no well-animated humans, and no multiplane cameras used before this movie. If there were no Snow White, what would have happened to animation? Would there even be CGI? <gasps> would there even be a Disney World? I don't want to think about it. I'm very thankful this movie exists, and from where I'm sitting, Snow White will remain at the top of this perch, at least for a long while. Overall impression. I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Fort Wayne is obviously named because it started as a fort. Today there is, in fact, a replica of that original fort to remind us how our city started. That historic fort is still very important to the city, regardless of the fact that nobody would want to live there on a permanent basis. Snow White is that fort. It is no longer the innovating, marvelous wonder that it was originally, but it still inspires us reference from history. It reminds us of where it all started, how far animation has come, and how limitless the potential still stands. It's obviously still a classic. No ranking I could give it could possibly change that. And it is, without a doubt, the number one Disney movie at this point. So what do you think? Scroll down to comment. If you're excited to see where each movie eventually lands, click like and subscribe below. Now carry on with whatever is more important than me.